the first author, Joa, is not here with us, but sends his greetings. Um, so as an overview, um, we're going to introduce you to um, our ongoing project and then talk about the mapping approach being used in the project. Um, and then after that, highlight um, the current state of slum mapping in the project. And then um, talk about some issues um, which we hope will kickstart the discussion. Um, so the ongoing project is National Institute for Health Research, uh, Global Health Research Unit on improving um, health in slums at University of Warwick. And the short-term goals are to map some identified uh, slums um, and then capture health services and facilities and, and also um, understand how they are used in these uh, slums. Our medium-term goal is to identify um, the costs associated with um, how the health services are run in these slums and the long-term goals are to um, build uh, models of uh, health services and um, try to investigate how uh, they could be improved. And also to create a platform of fund funded activities. And um, across these goals, um, we will involve people who can change things um, in the slums, like politicians, um, slum residents, um, um, and also the OSM community who can also help build um, quality baseline uh, maps. And also to bring together all existing evidence um, uh, relevant to slum context. Uh, so the project is a four-year project um, ending in 2021 and um, it costs about 5.7 million pounds. Um, there are five project partners, um, two in Asia and two in Africa, um, with the lead institution being the University of um, Warwick in um, the UK. So in Africa, we're working with University of Ibadan in Nigeria, uh, where uh, three slums are being studied. Um, Shasha, Edikan, and Barriga slums. And we're also working with African Population and Health uh, Research Center, APHRC, um, in uh, Kenya, where uh, two slums are being studied, uh, Korogocho and Viwandani slums. In Asia, uh, we're working with Aga Khan University in Pakistan, where two slums are being studied, um, Azambasti and Nilam Colony. And lastly, in uh, Bangladesh, um, we're working with uh, Independent University, uh, Bangladesh, where Korea slum is being studied. So these uh, slums actually vary in, uh, the size of the slums vary um, actually, and um, um, the biggest slum is uh, in Nigeria, Shasha, and then the smallest is in Pakistan, Nilam Colony. Um, the project also has um, five work packages. Um, work package one deals with geospatial mapping of the slums, that's where we're actually based, um, I'm working from, and work package two deals with household surveys. Um, work package three um, deals with evidence synthesis, bringing all evidence together relevant to slums. Um, and uh, work package five um, builds uh, health services and uh, models about health services and try to understand how best to improve them. And work package five um, deals with stakeholder engagement and touches on the other work packages. And uh, so work package one um, um, has uh, four main phases, the preparation, satellite uh, imagery digitization, participatory mapping, analysis and visualization. We'll talk more about this um, later. The outputs of the work package one are uh, social spatial data, which consists of accurate and detailed uh, slum maps at building level, um, and also household heads uh, listing. And this information is going to be used to uh, construct a sampling frame, which in turn is also going to be used to sample at least 1,000 households for further surveys. And uh, the output also include um, healthcare data, which uh, consists of um, uh, information about health services and facilities and derived um, accessibility metrics. And also, we would develop a methodological framework that will address uh, simultaneously spatial data quality and community engagement. So we are uh, combining methods from um, geographic data science and social research to tackle a methodological uh, challenge. Um, so the method is actually uh, situated at the intersection of spatial data quality, for example, completeness and uh, community engagement, such as training slum residents and involving them in the process. Um, our mapping approach uh, starts with some preparation activities, um, which involve um, um, where uh, 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 training materials are prepared, um, responsibilities for subsequent stages um, are also defined, also, uh, procurement of high-resolution optical satellite imagery, um, identification of slum uh, boundaries, and also using Hot Tasking Manager to um, develop um, online mapping platforms um, are also uh, done at this stage. 
Um, also, SLAM access permissions um, are also negotiated at this stage. Um, the online mapping stage involves um, using the developed online mapping platforms to organize our training sessions and mapathons to uh, achieve complete um, digitization of the slum areas. Um, here, um, the mappers are, um, were also uh, are, are to be, um, um, some of them we've already done this stage, so um, were um, actually um, authorized um, to uh, map on the platform. The online validation stage um, involves um, correcting errors um, identified after the um, online mapping stage. And the GPS field mapping stage um, actually is where the uh, field activities start, the, or the ground truthing. And so the slum access permissions are actually needed. Um, and this stage involves using G uh, handheld GPS trackers to um, track the footpaths and then uh, the road network um, with the aim of first um, validating the, um, the network and also densifying the, the network. Uh, and the data collected at this stage is used to um, um, update the um, OSM um, database online at the GPS digitization stage. After this, we um, print the uh, field paper maps and take it to the field and verify the structure geometry and um, simultaneously also record um, unique structure codes and some field notes uh, using a tablet. Um, here we are using two um, open source technologies. Um, we have Open Data Kit and then Open Map Kit. Beyond this, we um, scan the field paper maps and uh, conflict the OSM database um, online. And um, we end the field activities with a household health survey uh, and then healthcare facilities survey, beyond which we construct the sampling frame for Web Packet 2 to start, or the household surveys to, to start. I'll hand it over to Vangelis to continue. Thank you. So based on our methodological approach or our mapping approach, we didn't want to create data ourselves. We wanted the people from those areas to create the data that they're going to use afterwards. So in order to do that, we uh, held some mapathons. Uh, we held six mapathons in all of our uh, sites, uh, three in Kenya. We can see some, um, some pictures here. One in Nigeria and, uh, and uh, one in Bangladesh. And um, what we did was we provided technical support to those mapathons, which is more difficult than it sounds. And um, we also uh, helped in validation uh, for, for some of those uh, sites, but we also had the really uh, good help from the hot uh, OSM community in doing, those, in doing that validation. What we did was first to train some people from those sites because they were not familiar with OSM uh, platforms, train them how to, uh, how to produce maps on that, and afterwards they trained the uh, community participants in there. As you can see here in this stack graph, um, we had some, uh, in the areas that we had, we have here the, um, the number of, with a dark black, the number of trainers and facilitators we trained, and the lighter gray is the total number of people that were trained. Those people, uh, those, th this number includes people from the community, people that are slum dwellers, or people that are just volunteered to, um, to, to map in those, in those areas. But let's see what we have done with that. Um, with that approach. So that was the state of the two slums in Kenya. This is Biwandani on the left and Korogocha on the right before we, uh, we entered. As you can see, there's, there are not a lot of things in there. Some buildings in Korogocha from, from a previous project, but not a lot of information. And this is the current state. This is what we've created now. Uh, in total, we have added uh, more than 13,500 buildings and around 2.6 kilometers of road. Uh, this is just for the areas because uh, the mappers were so keen in, doing, in, in producing uh, more data that they have actually produced much more uh, information outside of the, um, of the area's boundaries. Uh, this is, these are our results in Bangladesh. Uh, this is uh, Korai in Bangladesh, which is one of the first slums in the world that has been um, I, I researched for um, for, for such purposes, and this was the, the state before the mapping. So as you can see, there is still a lot of, uh, there is already a lot of buildings, a lot of roads in here. However, this is what we have produced. Um, we have added some buildings here, uh, just more than 1,700, but a lot of roads in this case, almost 20 kilometers of road. This is the case in Kenya, in, in Nigeria, sorry, which was our more for me, our most interesting example, because as you can see, there is 
almost nothing in the on the slums. This is Bariga. This is um, this is Ibadan. There's nothing in there before the before our mapping. And with a great help, in, in this case, we had the help of the university that had a geography department. So they have, have GIS students who knew what they were doing from the beginning. They were more, much more easy to adapt. And this is the current state of it. Uh, it's quite remarkable, to be honest. Uh, almost 10,000 buildings, around 35 kilometers of road, uh, more than 35 kilometers of road. But if you see those areas now in OSM, around the, around the boundaries of the slums, there are much more buildings that we have uh, mapped, a lot of more roads and a lot of more information that we have added. As you can see in here, they were so keen in mapping that they have added green spaces, they have added streams, rivers, everything. They were really, really keen in doing that. I'm passing it out of here. Okay, so um, you can see um, we've added a lot of uh, spatial details um, to the map and for us it's, it's important because um, this spatial data will form the evidence base or the, sam the base for our sampling frame um, which is going to be used for the household service um, and the household service this is going to be um, spatially um, uh, restricted uh, or there has to be a, a certain minimum distance between the households um, for the catchment area of the health healthcare provision. So that's why we need this um, very detailed spatial data. Um, and um, on the other hand, we want to make sure that we have a high level of community partic participation because we want to have uh, we want to create inclusive data where we have um, where we know about the local context, where we know, for example, um, what might look at the map when we look at the map. Um, from a top-down perspective, you could say maybe there's a, um, a corner shop, but if we, if we have the local information, we might know that that corner shop also might provide some form of health care. We only know that if we really engage um, with the community. And by doing that, um, we also create some, or we hope to create some kind of um, um, shared learning processes, which we hope would lead to, to community empowerment as well. Um, so we needed to f come up with um, some kind of systematic approach um, to, to create this, both these kind of processes um, effectively. Uh, and we've done that we, um, with um, multi-level col collaboration from the local level to the global level. And as um, Godwin and Vangelis have mentioned, so we've um, first trained the trainers locally um, to, um, to organize mapathons with the community and with other um, local stakeholders, um, which then did. Um, and then for validation, uh, we worked with, um, with our local partners, so the universities and the African Population Health Research Center, um, for example, um, at the local level. Um, they, they also did validation and the wider OpenStreetMap community um, and other volunteers. And then ground truthing will be done by our partners um, on the ground, also with um, with uh, the participation of the community. Um, this is just to show here uh, the mapathons um, uh, on, in Bangladesh and in, in Nigeria um, with our partners and the, and the local community um, on the local level. And here at the international level, just as an example, um, our student mapping society in Warwick, the Warwick Resilience Mappers, um, also to represent the participation of the wider OpenStreetMap community in this project, for which we are very grateful. Um, so, in the end, what we, what we want is we, we hope to create a methodology, a systematic methodology, um, which is sensitive to the contextual characteristics of the, of the place, of the space, uh, and to, crea to create trusted evidence um, for um, for policies, for urban policies um, which um, are representative or as representative as possible, especially in places that were previously underrepresented, um, such as slums. Um, so, in the research, um, we think actually, I mean, we, we have done this project and we think there's some kind of trade off um, in terms of quality because. Um, so there's a discussion to be had about what are the parameters of quality um, in OpenStreetMap. So to what extent do we want to include local meaning into accepted classific classifications, which are the tags in OpenStreetMap? To what extent is that possible? Um, to what extent do we want to have uh, local participation? Um, or just do we just need to limit it to have objective accuracy? We just need to know the structures. We don't need to know exactly what these structures are. 
um, it depends on the situation. Um, and also the other discussion that might be interesting to have is, um, do we want to know exactly um, that a, a corner shop is also provide some kind of healthcare, um, or do we just want to make sure that all the structures that we can see in the image um, are, are digitized? So we want to put it out to the um, to the community that we actually um, we want to trigger discussion about what are the pr uh, the parameters of, of quality. Um, most likely, they will be related to the project needs. Um, and to the local context. Um, and this discussion also relates to, um, to a discussion that was um, recently that I, uh, on, in the humanitarian open street map um, team. Uh, in the mailing list, there was someone who said, um, what's, the, what's the obsession of, of HOT to with, with um, digitizing every little structure? Um, well, this, this kind of questions um, we could answer if we if we think about what quality means and in which con in which context and what and the project needs as well. So, for example, in an emergency in, in, in an emergency situation, um, we just might want to have um, we just might want to know that there is a structure, there's a building, and where the roads are. And in other projects, we might want to have more um, local knowledge. And also, the other question is. Um, should we include some kind of qualitative criteria in the question of, of what is quality? Um, should we ask to what extent has the community been involved uh, and is the data inclusive enough? So these are the kind of um, trade-offs that we might want to think about collectively as a, um, between uh, researchers and the wider OSM community. And um, so just to finish, we want to thank the OpenStreetMap community um, humanitarian open street map team uh, and missing maps um, whose help was well incredible um, throughout the project um, it would I think it wouldn't have been possible without you and um, our partners and funders uh, the national the UK National Institute for Health Research University of Warwick uh, the African Population and Health Research Center um, the Independent University of Bangladesh Aga Khan University and um, the University of, of Ibadan so We'd like to turn the discussion to you and to the wider OSM community. Um, if you have any ideas to talk about this kind of um, issues of quality or anything else that, um, that came to your mind just now, so please, please get in touch. Thank you very much for this very interesting presentation. Uh, are there questions? I kindly ask people asking questions to stand up. Hello, thanks for this uh, presentation. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, I was myself in uh, third world uh, countries five, six years ago in a previous uh, career. If I had that data, uh, it would have changed the way we uh, delivered uh, programs, definitely. Uh, I had a more of a human sciences question to you. Um, what was the impact in terms of the way uh, the locals perceived their slums after you showed them with their maps? Did it change the way that they perceived their slums? Because there is a weird phenomenon, which is that sometimes there is an attachment to the, the misery uh, that surrounds them. They, they feel um, close to it, uh, and proud, I mean, even sometimes proud uh, of what they have been able to build, even if it's just a little. Uh, so, your mapping work, uh, has it changed the way that they see themselves? Thank you. Um, thank you for the, uh, for the question. Um, I think, um, for now, the project actually like I said, is um, one year old, roughly. So um, I would say that for the work package, I think what your question is probably might be addressed by work package five, where stakeholder engagement is going to be more uh, intensive. So um, at the moment, the maps we've shown actually um, is still ongoing. So the method that we showed is really um, roughly about the GPS field mapping stage. So we've, we really have a lot to go 
in terms of completing the map. And then we jump into really the details about the stakeholders, the perceptions and all that. And which is also linked to the questions we're asking about quality. What is quality? So even we could consider that as uh, more, or less, more or less a quality, that perceptive quality about you know, the, 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 how the OSM community perceive um, OSM community in terms of, or let's say the slam, or the community themselves, the slam community perceive um, 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 the maps. You know, and as a way of sort of defining quality, you know. So we are, we're not reached there yet, but um, so in a way, I think the question might, is still hanging. Uh, probably you'll come back again after, after um, yes, yes, after a while, and then to address that. Yeah, thank you very much. Maybe uh, my colleagues. It's, it's a really nice question, and it was something that we we're really interested in as well. But the thing is that it's very content, context based what you're asking. So like some of the some of the slum residents, for instance, did not understand that they were actually living in slums. They thought that they were just living in an area in a city area, for instance, in Nigeria. So there are some these types of uh, perceptions that we want to address on the data as well, but are very context based until now from what we have seen. Actually, I think someone you might have also been in touch with or known, um, I think Map Kiberia, they're going to hold a presentation. They might know um, if you talk to Erika Hagen, um, she has got a lot of experience in that, so it might also be an interesting question to ask her. Hi, uh, thank you. A great presentation. Um, and th thank you again for sharing uh, previously um, your, your documentation about using field papers, um, which was extremely helpful. I wondered if you'd um, had any particular issues about using field papers and so on that you might be able to mention. I think um, probably uh, we might have to also acknowledge the presence of TASAF, uh, the OSM uh, community here. TASAF has been very um, active in our project and we really appreciate what he's done. So he's here, so I think it's best to um, uh, acknowledge him. Um, he's actually also uh, done um, a bit of, just to link to the question, a bit of the field papers on the ground uh, as a way of helping us in the project. So um, I don't know if you want to um, say something about that. But uh, for the, for so far, generally, from what we have um, um, experienced so far, both in testing, going to each of the slum areas to test, and with our experience with TASAF, um, I think um, we've, ha we've not really had any, um, any challenge, um, I mean, major challenge, you know. Um, we think that actually is, is a good way for, of starting, especially with the slum residents, who have actually no, um, um, IT skills and uh, uh, the field by really is a is a starting point. Really, we, it clicks with them. They see things. They can easily draw. You know what I mean. So, uh, it's something that um, I think is very important um, in a project like this. Um, I don't know if Tasa would like to add something to it. I would uh, rather say that uh, what we have uh, implemented over there, we we have a uh, bit of blend of uh, open using open map kit and at the same time using field paper uh, papers as uh, verifying the things uh, uh, or double checking the things uh, when uh, in uh, in the field we just uh, send uh, two uh, two of the field mappers at a time as a pair so one is uh, collecting data with uh, OMK, where other is uh, drawing on the field papers. Uh, that uh, certainly validated us afterwards when, when we validated the, uh, or ground truthed the things they have done over there. Uh, if, if those matches properly or uh, something is missing. With OMK, it is, it is hard to draw over there uh, uh, building structures and uh, stuffs. In the uh, dense areas, like the slum areas, uh, with the satellite imagery, you, you won't be able to find out uh, whether there is one or two buildings at a time, or a cluster of buildings are there. From the satellite imagery, it, it, it is shown that it is uh, either a single building or there is two buildings, but uh, at the end of the day, we found out that there is uh, almost five or six buildings out there. So when uh, field papers are there, uh, it helped out uh, the guys on the field to uh, also draw those uh, divisions within the uh, cluster of the buildings. And that helped us to identify the uh, 
house numbers and uh, ID, IDs, uh, structure IDs we are uh, planning to uh, give, plan to give over there. So uh, not only the uh, structures were mapped, uh, the structures were, were given uh, uh, identification numbers so that uh, afterwards when the survey will be done, uh, by the uh, Warwick University af afterwards and the other partners, uh, they will be easy. Those will be easily to uh, detect and uh, trace out afterwards. Can I just ask, how did you uh, give them the identification numbers? Did you use plus codes or anything like that? Uh, there is a convention. Yes, we have uh, a naming there. convention that we've developed about 13 digits, which is based on the fill paper sheet number. Um, enumeration area and all that up to um, the um, uh, uh, numbers that are written on the structure. So the first time visit to a structure, we, we number it as one and then it, it, it follows. So it builds up from there to um, the fill paper sheet number or letter or code, yes. Uh, Thank you. Uh, maybe I'd like to add a point to that as well because there's another um, issue that we observed, or that's generally being observed in the community um, or in the, with people who actually do some mapping in the slums. So when you look at um, and some uh, the doors um, of the individual households, you can see that every whenever there was a study, and every different study had different kinds of conventions. And you can see it's like a because there's there's a list of different numbers. Um, so there's another issue that we would need to talk about, and generally that's being discussed is how can we make sure we're not duplicating efforts all the time? And um, yeah, that's basically um, a key question, I think, with, uh, especially with mapping in slums. Hey, uh, thanks very much for uh, iRise. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's very nice to see how much uh, when we're doing research uh, in, uh, in those countries, uh, now we're doing research with OpenStreetMap and we're building the data we need. And we also want to build um, a sort of data folk, a community around the data. And um, what I think really interesting in, uh, in the project that, uh, that you're putting forward is that you first add uh, an iterations to build the structure, I mean the rough base layers, and then what you are describing as, um, as the, the quality data will be the details that you're going to add to the map. And uh, that's something which is not common uh, when uh, you run uh, those kind of research project when it's, uh, it's focused on one thematics. Usually there is a uh, uh, there are very specific needs for uh, for the for the study, and then you come with uh, with a list of features, and uh, and when it boils down to resources to get the the data in, then it's very difficult uh, to adjust to the needs of um, the the local people uh, living there, or and the people working or using the data. So I think it's uh, it's extremely interesting uh, in. In uh, in that uh, in that approach, so that was one comment that I wanted to make out out of your uh, specific project, and uh, then this also triggered the question for me uh, in terms of what is really uh, sought from the project in terms of uh, of uh, uh, intelligence that you want to produce over the territory uh, under uh, else perspective. Uh, are you focusing on specific uh, else items or is it just something which is broad about how else facilities are being used and managed? And um, so, uh, yeah, I think that this is it for me. And the second sub question is uh, what are the resources? I mean, how are you managing to, uh, in very poor areas, to, uh, to have people just going, mapping, and uh, how are you creating the mechanisms for um, those people to be in a position to map and perhaps to continue mapping? Or are you going to accommodate with some stakeholders that are keen on going on a workshop, but they will want to have uh, some workshop fees, per diems, and all the things, which are very difficult to handle if you want to build sustainability over time. So that's the one, the remark and the, the two questions. So for your, for your first question, this is actually 
What are, what are we thinking about promoting OSM in, in such uh, projects? This is a this is a project funded by the NHS, by the NIHR, which is like health uh, organization. So the uh, the whole concept of the project is to provide better health 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 uh, to increase uh, um, to um, enhance um, healthcare provision in, the, in those areas. Our approach was for mapping that they didn't they didn't actually want us to use OSM. They just wanted the maps. This was our approach, our pro supervisor's approach, uh, approach, that chose to do this, uh, to choose this um, itinerary to go that this way. Um, so yeah, this is a way of promoting OSM in general, and we were discussing about that before, about how we can make this academic. This, this is actually a project that is a personification of, of this, uh, this uh, endeavor. Just to add to that, first, uh, thanks a lot for the um, positive remarks. And also, um, on the issue of resources, um, we have, um, we're working with the local partners. Uh, you know, we mentioned um, University of Ibadan, um, Aga Khan University, uh, APHRC, and um, uh, 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 Inpeda University of uh, Bangladesh. And so, we're also uh, tapping into the resources of the OSM community. And one typical example is um, our relationship with our cooperation with uh, TASAF, um, who is uh, the leader of the OSM community in Bangladesh. And they helped us a lot in terms of um, the logistics and the um, uh, best way of kind of uh, collecting or doing the mapping. And because they've already had the um, knowledge of the tools that we're using, and so the training was a little bit reduced from our side. Um, so um, that was very useful for us. So they had to just go in there uh, as facilitators, train the core local partners, project the project team there to for them to understand the best ways of doing things. Um, we also organized through Skype um, 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 several training sessions um, and then beyond that so training train the trainers kind of thing and to allow them to also uh, especially with the mapathons and the training sessions they were able to then organize their own mapathons and, and organize themselves locally uh, to, to map. Um, and beyond that, not necessarily just mapathons, they were also, um, the, the core team were also um, um, doing the mapping afterwards or in between. Yeah, so um, I think uh, in that sense, that is it. And we also bought uh, handheld GPS devices, especially for the um, GPS tracking and others. We, it's not that much, but we were able to at least, um, I think for each slum we, we bought just one uh, Garmin handheld GPS and we were able to use that to densify the network or validate the, um, 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 what has already been mapped and things like that. Yeah. Okay, sorry I have to stop the discussion here because we are so already out of time. And sometimes, yeah, and we're providing per diems as well. We're providing per diems as well for the, for the slum residences. Okay. Okay. Just one announcement. If you have a presentation in any of the rooms, please upload your slides before, in the coffee break or in the lunch break before. Especially if you have a lightning talk, because you know lightning talks are very short, so we need everything already on the computer or show up if you're using your own laptop. Thank you very much to the presenters and to the audience for the discussion. <laughs>